Ark Survival evolved as a huge game. Blasting onto PC in early access, it quickly gained a following for its mixing of survival mechanics and dinosaurs, something we all love. It itches that fantasy setting that's long been ignored. It's a heavy, intensive game that struggled even on beefy PCs and much more powerful consoles. I'm Jordan from Switch Watch and we're going to see how this has turned out on the Nintendo Switch. Before we get into it, be sure to click that subscribe button for all the latest Nintendo Switch content and become part of the Switch Watch community. The story for Ark is a simple one. You are a man or a woman washed up on a mysterious island with only rags to cover your modesty. The island is inhabited by prehistoric creatures, some real, some fantasy. All you need to know is that you have to survive. There is supposed to be a mystery surrounding the island that you uncover and that's probably the secondary optional goal, although completely unnecessary for your enjoyment of the game. In all honesty, I did not check this aspect of the game out and I don't think you guys need to either, but it's there if you want it. Let's just get straight into the gameplay. The gameplay for Ark Survival Evolved is what you would expect from the subtitle. Survival is the key to this game. As you're washed upon this island, you need to piece together bits and bobs to survive. From a first person perspective, you have to gather materials in order to gradually build things such as a home base, weapons, and a bewildering amount of other things. It's at this point that I realized it's a bit of a struggle to review this game because the concept is so simple, yet the depth is pretty unsurmountable for a reviewer like me, especially one new to the game. There's very little in between here, but I will try my best. There are RPG elements, and early on you'll find yourself leveling up fairly frequently. The more you level up, the more things you can unlock to craft. At first you'll start off only being able to craft basic survival stuff like a primitive spear, axe and so on, but the more experienced you become, you'll be unlocking a bewildering amount of potential things to craft. Some will help you in the survival aspects like creating weapons and traps, while others will be a little bit more fanciful for showing off. The sheer volume of your crafting ability is both satisfying and overwhelming, and I'm not sure if the unlocking balance is quite right in this regard, but either way, this is not a shallow game by any means. You obviously have to manage your hunger levels and such, so locating food sources is a must. You can source food from berries most of the time, but you'll probably want to top yourself up nicely with a bit of cooked meat from an animal once in a while. I think this is a good time to talk about how long-winded some of the processes here can be. Firstly, you can eat raw meat if you want to, but that will affect your health, so it's the best idea to cook it. To do so, you need to build a fire, but you need to be at a certain level to do that. You also need to source the materials for the fire, wood and stone, etc. Once you've built the fire, you need to access the fire's inventory and then put some kindling material in there with the meat. And then you need to light the fire and wait for the meat to cook. It may not sound like too much to do, but when your inventory system was designed with PCs in mind first, and it's overall not particularly responsive, the whole process is more clunky than it needs to be. The same goes for the mortar and pestle, which just trying to make tranquilizing arrows pretty much drove me nuts. So there are interface issues, and it will take a while for you to adjust. I mean, just looking back on my gameplay video, I look like a complete imbecile with how I handled the inventory system. You do get used to it though, and you can eventually do things fairly quickly, aside from the long-winded nature of creating certain things. One of the massive draws of Ark for me was the ability to tame and rear the dinosaur species that roam the island. This can be done a couple of ways, but the standard way is to knock an animal unconscious in a few ways, and then feed them their required diet until they warm up to you and consider you their master. This is not a simple process for many of the beasts out there. Dodos will be yours after eating just a couple of berries and so I quickly got my trusted duo Juan and James but this pteranodon like beast took an age to win over. I had to keep bashing it over the head with a stick just so it wouldn't wake up before it came to my side. This probably won't be viable straight from booting up the game. You'll want to level yourself up a fair while first in order to beef your stats and be able to craft some of the more useful tools to assist you. There are a raft of helpful guides out there for newcomers, and I suggest you do a little bit of research, at least before going online. Offline, sure, find your feet by yourself and enjoy the discovery, but you may struggle to enjoy the game if you constantly get stomped by less than welcoming players online. Ambitious is the word for this game, maybe too ambitious at times. There's no way I can get totally stuck into this game even after a dozen hours of playing. There's so much more that I could potentially do and show off. There's lots of great fantasy concepts we've all dreamed about in video games, base building, dinosaur taming, feeling like you're really surviving here. 
What I really loved about this game was the unknown. You never know what's going to be around the next corner, and the ceaseless nature of danger is every path and every route. You truly feel like you're in this prehistoric world. I was surprised at how Jurassic Park-like it could be at times, with moments and scenes fit to grace the big screen. One moment I decided to go grab some fish for a bird that I wanted to tame, so naturally I went swimming with my spear. After dealing with a tasty fish and attempting to drag it to the shore for my desired bird, unbeknownst to me, a few meters from the shore a giant monster crocodile had seen me taking the tasty food and chomped on me good. I never thought I'd quote Star Wars The Phantom Menace, but there's always a bigger fish. And this happened so many times in my playthrough with different monsters. Just when you think everything's going smoothly, BAM! You'll be pounced on by a sneaky raptor or a giant anaconda. It's really very thrilling, especially early on when you're so ill-equipped. You'll die a lot, for sure. I died so many times which can be disheartening considering you lose pretty much everything in your inventory. You keep all your experience and unlocked blueprints, plus all your constructions will be intact, but you still need to craft everything again and gather everything again, unless you are clever enough to store surplus equipment and materials in crates and stuff. Alternatively, you can head back to your corpse and pick up your old stuff, but considering you are probably eaten by a T-Rex roaming around the area, it might not be the best option. As I'm sure you guys can hear, I like this game a lot, despite its flaws. In the other versions of the game there are multiple maps, but it seems that the Nintendo Switch version only has access to the original map called The Island. I tried unlocking the other maps, but nothing happened, so I'm assuming this will be DLC or perhaps in a future update. The developers are being very quiet on this release, which I'm finding very odd. I guess just one map is a little bit sad, but to be fair, it is very, very big, and I've barely gone over like 10% of it in like a dozen hours or so, so it's a massive game to newcomers especially. Now, there is an online constituent for ARK, and it's actually one of the biggest draws, and I did get to sample it with a few seemingly lovely people. They were way more advanced than me at the time, and seemed friendly enough showing off their gear. It provided probably the funniest moment I've had this year in gaming, where upon first meeting them upon the shore, these powerful, mysterious wanderers that could potentially help me and ally with me, my character immediately defecated on the floor, at which point all three of us gathered around to stare at it for a while. I think they were pretty impressed with my turd. I probably didn't get enough time with the online, and certainly not with enough people, but I did find it fairly smooth overall. I didn't have any connection problems, which I was surprised about. We'll see how it holds up though once the game is fully released. Visually, Ark has always been a lovely looking game on the PC, and it's especially impressive from an indie developer, well, technically. Eyebrows were raised about how it could turn out on the Nintendo Switch. And I don't care what you all said during my gameplay video, watching it on your small phones or tablet screens, on a big screen, Ark Survival Evolved looks like absolute garbage. There are times when actually it may seem to look lovely, especially some dinosaurs close up, but looking further than an inch away from your character and the game is a murky, blurred nightmare. It's a massive game, I get it, but this is not any more ambitious than Breath of the Wild. It truly looks very, very poor and I can't believe they've let it out in this state. I mean, the game works, but it's incredibly unappealing to play and it does have an impact on your performance in the game. You can't see dangerous predators ahead. Maybe a blurry, frame-breaking, translucent thing will show up on the horizon, but that could be anything. The performance isn't any better too. Weirdly, sometimes it was fairly smooth, other times it became a slideshow. The latter extreme was few and far between, though, and most of the time the game had a stutter here and there, which is not great to say the frame rate is below acceptable to begin with. I played a lot worse, to be fair, but it's still pretty unacceptable. I know what you're all saying, where's panic button when you need them? Well, I'm not even sure their miracle work could do Ark much good without serious reconfiguration of the base game. So in regards to the comments on my gameplay, I do want to know what the overall consensus is regarding how you think this game looks. In the top right hand corner, I've put a poll asking you how you think it looks. Is it just me who thinks it looks absolutely terrible? Let us know. In the audio department, you got a soundtrack from Gareth Coker of Ori and the Blind Forest fame, and that quality shines through here. It's epic, wondrous, in the same way as Jurassic Park, but also with lots of tribal sounds with deep thumping percussion. It's truly very good. 
I got similar vibes from this as I did with the Elder Scrolls game soundtrack. And if that's not high enough praise, I don't know what is. I will say that booting the game up, the audio is incredibly muffled and grainy, but once actually in the game, it seems fine. Then again, I haven't played Ark on other platforms to compare, but it seemed fair enough. For value, Ark comes with a premium price tag, which is unusual for an indie game. There's no official line on what the price is for the eShop, but Eurogamer have suggested that it would be $49.99. And as that is similar to the retail release, I think it should be around that price, give or take. I think due to the lack of polish in many, many areas of the game, it's overpriced. $15 to $20 cheaper could have gone a long way in my opinion. There's no doubt the publisher has made an obscene amount of money from this game, and it would be nice to see that put back into the game and making it a more professional product rather than, than pumping out and selling more DLC, rather than fixing the stuff that's already here. Indeed, if this is a full priced release with DLC coming afterwards, I will be rather disappointed that they didn't include it in the package as an all-in-one. Saying that, you will almost certainly put hundreds, if not thousands of hours into ARK if it grabs you. And at that point, the price is pretty much moot, so it's a difficult one to say. Overall, ARK is such a difficult game for me to give a verdict for. It's in that very weird paradox of being a game that I really enjoyed, but one that I can't actually recommend, at least not fully. It's got so much going for it, yet so many crippling problems at the same time. It's stuck together with staples and sellotape, but the gameplay is really fun and addictive, but again with a few frustrating aspects to it. I can see myself getting totally lost in this game, however, and I've barely scratched the surface. There's a whole base building, tribe making mechanic that I couldn't even check out for this review. I really enjoyed this, but the port is just so ugly and runs so poorly, it's difficult to know what to do. It's been a long time since I deliberated this hard on what to score a game. It may look and perform poorly, but I won't lie to you, I still had a great time with Ark, and I hope to have a lot more time with it in the future. I can't give it a free pass on the issues though, so it is a 7 out of 10. After the first 10 minutes of playing, I didn't expect that. Now if you're into survival games with a slightly different theme, then click the link to watch my review of This War of Mine, which releases today on the Nintendo Switch. It's very different, but well worth a look. And of course, click that subscribe button if you're new here. I've been Jordan from Switchwatch, and I'll see you next time. Take care.